Hello again, I'm Blunty, and this is episode 1 of Blunty's Force Tober. In this app, I'll be previewing what you can expect from Star Wars The Force Unleashed 2. The Force Unleashed 2 can be likened to The Empire Strikes Back in that it's a sequel which is both a darker and more personal story of pain and loss. It's also a search for hope and identity as Starkiller is resurrected, apparently a clone of the original created by Darth Vader. He's haunted by memories and feelings. Vader tells him he's another failure and will be killed, but rather than face this fate, he escapes from Vader's cloning laboratory and starts a journey trying to piece together his shattered memories and figure out who and what he really is. Starkiller really isn't good or evil. He's just kind of broken and looking for hope and trying to build a new sense of self. Death is a natural part of life. Foolishly, you hold to hope for the life you once had. Let go of everything you fear to lose. You must. You think you have a purpose, a destiny. Uncertain and fearful you are. You are but a shadow of your former self. Confused, you have become weak and misguided. Hide not from yourself. Accept the certainty. Confront your fear. That all is lost. Will I ever see you again? Like the first game, it ties into the overall Star Wars saga, filling in more blanks between the original story and the prequels. This is a game where story is king, and the writing, and especially the performances, really give this game some emotional punch. Now, I say this based on my limited playtime with the game. I've not had a chance to get my hands on my own copy to play right through yet, but I learned a lot about the story from a recent trip to LucasArts and talking with the people who actually made this game. And I think this sequel may very well receive even more praise and awards for the writing, story and performances than the first Force Unleashed game. I was expecting Lord Vader. The Jedi. Where is he? Oh, he's alive. For the moment. He's been in the arena for seven days. What? are the Imperial Security Codes for this sector? The Security Codes. There have, of course, been several enhancements to the gameplay as well, including a revamped targeting system making selecting objects for throwing about with the Force a much easier and intuitive proposition. In the first game it worked well enough, but it often felt a bit clumsy. This time around, I think they've really got it right. It feels faster and easier and is much more obvious which object you're targeting. There have been some improvements made to the camera system as well. I never really had much of a problem with the camera in the first game, but I'm told it's been made better this time, which I'll take on face value. And naturally, there's even more beautiful and varied locations in which to obliterate stormtroopers, droids, and generally slice and smash through smithereens with the very clever physics engines in the game. Starkiller even has some new and enhanced force powers this time around. For instance, how would you like to be able to force grip TIE fighters out of the air, crush them like they were made of paper, and hurl the twisted wreckage into a squad of stormtroopers? Yeah, you can totally do that, and it's awesome. You can even use the Jedi mind trick this time, convincing your enemies to fight on your behalf and kick the crap out of their former teammates. Which is all fine and funny, but where it gets hilarious is that as you grow stronger, not only will they fight for you, but sometimes they'll get so overwhelmed and confused, they'll just kill themselves, throw themselves off ledges, throw themselves into energy fields, whatever. I can't do this anymore! Tonight, you will fight for me! I will fight for you! even explode like human grenades, and if they happen to run into the midst of your enemies before their head explodes, all the better. You will have noticed by now that you're wielding two lightsabers this time around, which makes the combat feel even faster, more idiogenic, and more brutal than ever before. And then, there's what they call Force Fury, a power-up which unleashes insane power as it amps up all your Force powers to terrifying levels, including being able to literally vaporize your foes with the Force. 
Naturally, graphics have had an upgrade. The game is stunningly beautiful in every way. The levels not only look pretty, but all the environmental effects like the lighting system and the rain actually making reflective puddles and your clothes getting wet from the shoulders down like it really should make the game feel very, very immersive. The environments feel wonderful. You really start to feel like you're part of the Star Wars universe. Sound isn't left out either with a rewritten sound engine. The technical details are a bit nerdy, so I'll skip over them, but suffice to say you're in for a treat, especially if your game system is hooked up to a surround sound system. Force Unleashed 2 is an emotional, dark and personal story performed wonderfully by the cast and it's all backed up by some amazingly well implemented game technology. It's taken everything that was great about the first game and polished it properly and respectfully. I am very, very much looking forward to playing this game. Thanks for watching, I'm Blunty and I'll catch you next time. He has a healthy head start. Find the woman and bring her to me. He will follow. I'll need a squadron of stormtroopers. They won't be coming back. The Empire will provide whatever you require. <laughs> hmm. They'll do.